testosterone is the main male hormone. There are other male hormones, but it's the, the, one of the most potent uh, male hormones that is produced. It's produced actually in men and women, but the levels in men is very much higher. It itself is converted into an even more active hormone called dihydrotestosterone, which is thought to be the main hormone that is responsible for masculinization. It's a steroid uh, and is produced predominantly by the testicles but also by the adrenal glands. About 90% of testosterone is produced by the testicles and having one testicle removed shouldn't affect the overall production of testosterone because the remaining testicle, providing it's healthy and hasn't been damaged or diseased in its lifetime, should be able to compensate. If the level of testosterone doesn't recover, um, there is a question of whether or not we ought to be replacing it. A lot of that will depend on whether or not the person has symptoms of testosterone deficiency. Very often, at an early stage following an orchidectomy, they, patients will feel very tired um, and may feel quite emotional and it's difficult to know at that point whether some of those symptoms are due to low testosterone or not. One of the current problems is there is no specific regime for men directly affected by testicular cancer and we know that about 25% of men who've been treated for testicular cancer will suffer low testosterone levels. But there is a problem if the level comes back as borderline. A lot of men are finding that treatment with testosterone replacement therapy is not recommended in that situation. However, current guidelines do suggest that at least a trial, for instance, of six-month testosterone replacement therapy should be implemented. And if it does have an effect and relieves the symptoms, then it should be pursued. Also, our, le our assessment of testosterone based on levels in the blood is relatively crude. Most of the testosterone is actually bound to carrier proteins, that's so-called the total testosterone. Only a small amount is active, the free testosterone. And that level of free testosterone may be influenced by other things, such as whether patients are overweight, which can tend to lower the total level, still maintaining the free level, such that it appears they're testosterone deficient, when in fact they're not. In addition, the level of testosterone rises through the day. So if patients are coming to a morning clinic, you may find that the level isn't that high, but if you waited a little longer, it might come up. So very often we will take several readings before we commit patients to testosterone replacement or offer it to them. So not everyone will want it. However, men who have had more extensive treatment, for instance, a full course of chemotherapy, such as BEP chemotherapy, the chemotherapy can interfere with the production of testosterone and the function of the normal remaining testicle. What we tend to see is men who six to nine months after treatment with chemotherapy are at home, they may have not, they're not as active as they used to be, they're feeling quite low in mood, they may have put on weight around their middle, around their breast, they've lost their sex drive, they've lost the ability to basically cope with everyday life. And what tends to happen in some cases is men will go and see their healthcare professional with these symptoms and they'll often be told that, well, you know, this is a normal feeling. They've just had a major life-changing event, they've been treated for cancer and they're going to feel a bit low, they're going to feel a bit depressed. And often they will be given antidepressants or referred for counselling which ultimately may not do any good because the real problem is a low testosterone level. A well-balanced diet is quite important to have a good diet and that would help increase your, um, to, to maintain your testosterone levels. A poor diet can affect and uh, your hormones that your body produce and consequently can affect your testosterone. And the other thing to look at is exercising. Exercising to increase your, um, your um, it does help to, to increase your energy levels. 
The other thing to consider, which is quite important, is something that we don't really take um, uh, seriously, is having a good night's sleep, having adequate hours, to, um, 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 hours in your sleep. Um, and that would help you to have a, um, a, a t that does help in your well-being. Avoiding too much alcohol um, um, and just basically sticking to what, uh, the recommendation of alcohol intake because high alcohol um, consumption can affect um, um, your, your hormones and will have an adverse effect as well on your testosterone production. One of the big problems about testosterone is it's not really suitable to give as a tablet. Tablets are available, but the drug is broken down in the liver, which means that most of what you take as a tablet will be inactivated. So most long-term testosterone replacement is either using gel or using intramuscular injections. And nowadays, the most popular intramuscular injection lasts between 8 and 12 weeks, so it's relatively infrequent. The problem is that, as I said, it isn't an exact science and it can take a combination of both types of treatment, um, sometimes over a long period of time, to actually get what's right for a particular man. What works for one man may not work for the other. And this trial and error can take quite a while and you know, can even last over a year or more. But in addition to that, we ask people how they feel. It's quite important to know whether or not um, replacing the testosterone has made them feel better. Now some people will be very happy, some people will find other effects that they don't like. It affects their mood, it makes them more aggressive, it makes the skin very oily. Some of them will develop acne. So for some patients, it, it, trying it is fine, and they'll eventually decide that they are not happy with that. And certainly if the levels are borderline, we tend to be much more relaxed about it. But it's certainly some, at the moment, I don't think there's any way to know exactly who is going to benefit from replacement in, in that area uh, and who is not. Obviously, if the levels are right down, then the recommendation to protect patients against problems like osteoporosis and muscle loss is that they receive testosterone replacement.